what is going on everyone welcome welcome in hello everyone happy happy sunday yes it is a good one hopefully you guys were able to go check out ned stark's headless ned stark's channel for uh top funko products of this year we did that if you missed it go back uh it was what the three worst uh a five of our favorite 2022 releases and then five top pickups we did for the year so it was very cool great channels were involved in that go and check it out if you didn't already um other big news how about avatar um avatar the way of water i'm not going to see it um looking at the numbers i kind of would have thought it would have done better um 134 million dollars this weekend so worldwide 434 million and a half dollars uh, at the box office worldwide 134 domestically uh 300 internationally up to this point so i mean definitely good but I don't know. Were you expecting something big? I was expecting big, huge numbers. Maybe it's just me. Maybe a lot of people are waiting till the week between Christmas and New Year's like me. That's what I'm waiting for uh, till I go see it. So we have that. Also, I will spend three minutes on this topic. Um, all the drama, what, since Wednesday or whatever, bands for arms, right? Bands for arms, selling fake Funko Pop autographs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is what I'll say. I bought Bands for Arms mystery boxes. I got them all. Now, with all the stuff coming out, I was not aware that so many people did not get their mystery boxes from like two, two and a half years ago. Unaware. Did I get all my boxes? Yes. Was it easy? No. Um, fake autographs? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. You know, maybe I'll show you stuff like this. Huh? Yeah, bands for arm, Kristen Wig, right? Autograph. Or maybe we'll go like this. Another. There's a band. Uh, that's supposedly um, Gail Godot's autograph. So listen, this is what I'll say. Did he sell fakes? Does he do movies? Does he not do this? What is this whole deal? I have no idea. No idea. I can tell you this because a lot of people were saying this about Sean when he opened that um arlia vegeta he didn't know about that if it was rigged it was rigged on nick's half not sean's that's all i'll say about it um if you don't have boxes that he bought you i really do feel for you i really really truly do because it's past the time you could do anything about it as far as selling fake autographs i will say this you know dr applesauce the gas cast a lot of people have dropped videos talking about them i know pop force one talked about the whole incident as well um there's bad business and then there's uncalled for stuff and then there's totally blatant bad stuff selling fake autographs is one of the worst thing you can possibly do my point what i will what i will tell you guys is that and yeah i know he's changed the store to popcorn store listen I, I i don't know what to say i really truly don't know what to say but i will say this if you are going to buy autographs guys and you are talking about an expensive autograph right you don't buy it unless you physically see that person sign it or it comes with validation from JSA, Beckett, third-party PSA. PSA has kind of dipped a little bit in my mind, but that's what you have to do. If you're going to buy a $400, $300, $200 signed Funko Pop, best believe it better come with them some of authentication or you better see that person sign it in front of you. Period, bar none. That's my advice to you guys. Um, hopefully you can learn something from it for all the people that didn't get boxes. I truly do appreciate it. I think you have some super sleuths on the case. Was the money truly donated? Was this truly done? Was that there's a lot of stuff. I don't know. I feel for everyone that didn't get boxes and uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously I did an interview with Nick about two years ago. Um, I spent heck trying to get mystery boxes that I was owed. It wasn't easy, but, um, anyway, that's what I'll say about Bands for Arms. Tonight, we have a very special guest. Um, you guys know I like to collect wrestling figures. You see some of them that sit behind me right there, right? Very cool. So on those wrestling figures, sometimes you get belts. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to have champions wear the belts, right? So this is a belt like you would get with a figure. You know, It doesn't matter if it's a supreme figure, an ultimate figure. This is the belt that comes with it. Kind of chintzy, right? The man that's going to come join me tonight, Dan Turnquist, he creates belts and makes them. Now look at this bad boy. Look at that. That is art, my friends. That is art. Um, 
he does figure belts. He's going to come talk to us. Uh, he also was a professional wrestler at one time as well. So curious to see uh, his take on that, how he does these belts and creates them and everything like that. Um, it's just sort of a, something different. We're also going to unbox a pair of custom shoes uh, designed for the Death Match King, Matt Cardona. Remember, check out Matt Cardona on the Indies. Maybe he makes his return to WWE. We will have to wait and see. Um, and also, if you want some interesting stuff and you love figures, go to the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. It's a great podcast. It's free wherever your podcasts come out. They come out on Friday. And they talk collectibles and figures and stuff like that. It is a great podcast. Check it out. Yeah. Glue on common soda. Hey, Dan could help you. Dan could help you with that. Yes, we will open. Uh, these were custom shoes designed by Bull Airs. So we will open those in a few minutes as well. Yes. Um, actually, let's open one thing right now. Because it's kind of like a little wrestling type thing. You know, let's look at the Pro Wrestling Crate Mystery Box. So this is an older one. I think this is November's. I think. I think this is November's. Uh, you can get these at ProWrestlingTees.com. Kind of cool stuff, right? Um, and the box is definitely worth it. I think it's like 30 some bucks, $36, something like that. Maybe 40 shipped. But really, the two t-shirts almost pay for the whole box themselves. Like, uh, how about the acclaimed Scissor Me Daddy? Very cool. Great little t-shirt there. An Evil Uno sticker. This is a nice one. We got... A little Scott Hall, the bad guy, R.I.P. Kind of cool. I like the shirt. Um, not big on wearing R.I.P. shirts, but still very cool. How about uh, the Elite Mini Keychain Brawler? Very cool. We have a John Moxley pin. Uh, again, these also, the Micro Brawler is very collectible. The Double J Jeff Jarrett Micro Brawler. We have a comic featuring a pinup gallery, Tales from the Road. Uh, I don't know who did this one. That's cool. And we have an autograph, and the autographed 8x10 is coming from Akeem, the African Dream, WWF, of course, uh, also played the one-man gang. And this is going back to when I was young, you know, looking back at the one-man gang. I remember going up to Hershey, PA, in the old Hershey Arena, watching the One Man Gang and Hulk Hogan do battle. Um, you know, when there weren't like all these TV things. But there it is uh, the acclaimed t shirt, the bad guy tribute shirt, the Jeff Jarrett Micro Brawler, 250 were chases. Joey Janella uh, comic book, One Man Gang, or Hakeem autographed 8 by 10 John Moxley pin, the Elite Baby Vase keychain, and Evil Uno sticker. So some awesome pieces if you guys want to grab a box for yourself. Uh, it does go up a couple bucks when you go to the bigger shirts. I think like 2X or 3X raises like uh, like 3 or $5. I think. In that range. All right. So we did that. I will talk about this, you know. Um, here we go. So guys, don't forget this week is retro toys nft release um i will probably have to say in my opinion probably one of the most ho-hum releases of nfts wow i don't have words for it uh your grail mr potato head is and he looks like a chicken nugget oh my goodness i don't know how many packs they're gonna do um that's the grail mr potato head as uh, optimus prime uh, Mr. Potato Head as Bumblebee. We have a Furby. We have a Hungry Hungry Hippo. Uh, we have Stretch Armstrong, and we round it out with Freddy Funko as the royalty holding Simon Says. Now, I will tell you this. This kind of intrigues me. I kind of like this because it's a homage to Hasbro with the shirt. I like that. Holding Simon Says. That one is kind of cool. Uh, is it enough to put together a whole set or buy packs? Ooh, ooh, man. Um, I don't know. I can't answer that one. 
Uh, if you didn't see my video, guys, from earlier this week where you saw how I put it together just by spending money. And you can see what it's like doing that and by ripping. Um, for instance, if you look at Grown Kids TV, Mike, uh, Michael over at Grown Kids TV's put together, I think he opened over $300 worth of packs, you know, premium packs. And I think he had one or two legendaries and 80% of the set. So for right about 300 bucks, I got all four legendaries. All well, eventually I got all four. There's a you know second part to the video you guys don't see. Um, but eventually got the all the legendaries. Didn't want the grail and completed the set for right about uh, 300 and about the same price. So it takes the fun away from opening packs, but you get everything you want. Is that what you want? Is it not what you want? That's for you to decide. Um, yeah, I don't know about, uh, I don't know about this, this stuff though. So let me do something with the internet just to be on the safe side. Hopefully everything's going good. And NFTs are tough. I mean, I'm not going to lie. NFTs are what they are. Um, Yeah. So they're not for everyone. I think a lot of people like the redeemables of NFTs, and I think people like that. I like the redeemables. Um, I like the Freddies. But like that whole set does not interest me, and I don't view those as Mr. Potato Head. I don't know about you. For me, they don't look good. You know, they look like a chicken nugget to me, again. I don't like any of them, uh, but the Freddy Funko kind of is kind of cool. But it's a brutal set, like Papa Missouri said. It, it, it's brutal. There's no doubt about it. That's a brutal set. And one week after you drop uh, the last set, ugh, I don't know. If you're going for them, I wish you all luck. Uh, also, don't forget Black Adam came out to HBO um, Max this past week to stream. That's on a list. Uh, Knives Out or Knives Out uh, something Onion or something like that comes out this Friday. So some great streaming movies. Obviously, Avatar is something everyone wants to go see. Um, I'm waiting between Christmas and New Year's. It's a three-hour-plus movie. i got to be in the right frame of mind, especially if I'm taking... I think the kids want to go see it. We will see. All right. Let's do an unboxing. So this is from Bull Airs. Let me show you guys Bull Airs. So Bull Airs, uh, a very, very cool... I mean, this guy is an artist. Um, as you can see, some of these things. So he takes, you know, Nikes, uh, Dunks, Jordans, etc., and he customizes them, but like nothing you've ever seen. I mean, look at some of these shoes, Turtle Power. Uh, some of these still available, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, SB Dunk Lows. Uh, very cool jackets. I mean, it is just very, very cool stuff. Uh, look at these Serial Monster sneakers. I think we talked about these one time. I mean, these, super, super cool. I kind of regret not getting a pair, but at the same time, I don't know. But super, super cool stuff, guys. Uh, very, very artistic, creative. Um, and that's what these are. So these were designed uh, for Matt Cardona. There was a special uh, pre-sale on these. I think it was maybe August. And there were a couple versions. Um, these I got were like the blood spatter versions. So, of course, if people don't know, Matt Cardona, uh, formerly Zack Ryder of WWE. Now, he went to GCW and had, quote-unquote, a death match. In that death match, he kind of was, he won, won the title. And kind of, um, I mean, we're talking blood and guts. You can go on YouTube and see that match. I mean, it's it's violent. Here uh, are the shoes. So there's Bull Airs, designed, very cool. All right, let's put these down here. So I probably will leave these wrapped. So this is the blood version. And here they are. So, again, Matt Cardona, you can sort of see his skull design there. Still here. And then it's got the blood spatter. Uh, again, sort of paying homage to his colors, to his ring gear. 
Look at the denim on the toe. A little zipper on the side. Now these do take an Air Jordan um, shoe, but all stitched in. Very, very cool. So again, I like the blood on it. And there is Bull Airs, and that is actually uh, a facsimile of uh, Cardona's signature there. That's that shoe. And then here's the other one, sort of the same thing. Sort of the blood representing the Deathmatch King and the Deathmatch he had. A little blood there on that side. And going around. Super, super cool custom shoes. Bull Airs, if you ever want custom shoes. I think he also does um, take some requests. Also has the Always Ready, which is sort of his moniker. And there you can sort of see it. So it does, it is signed by, it looks like it's actually signed by Matt Cardona. Um, and I think it's also signed by uh, the creator. So there you can sort of see uh, there was the bloody version, the distressed version, and the normal version. We went with the bloody, which is basically the distressed with a little blood added to it. So very, very cool sneakers. Um, I like them a lot. Awesome, awesome stuff. So, again, if you guys want to look at custom sneakers, check out Blair's. If you love turtles, I know he's a huge turtles guy, huge turtle collector. Go check him out. Uh, Bullairs.com. Here's the website. Again, where you can go check it out. And you can see some of these still available. So, it's, uh, it's Bullairs.com. <clears throat> Get a hold of him on that side. Maybe you you know you want to make a custom and uh, he could do something for you. So these some like turtles. Look at that. Very very cool stuff. You know is is it cheap? No, they're not cheap. But it's custom shoes and you're 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 building them off of you know an Air Jordan or an SB Dunk, which are not cheap to begin with. So have to take that in uh, into account when you're considering this. <clears throat> if you guys look it up, it is Matt Cardona versus Nick Gage deathmatch. We're talking light tubes, pane of glass. <clears throat> he goes into it with a white shirt. At the end of it, that shirt is like burgundy. No joke. Uh, he did a vlog on it, too, where literally they had to wrap him in towels and tape to get him on an airplane to fly the next day. So, I mean, it was, it was not... I mean, it was an ugly match. At the end of it, they were throwing bottles in the ring because he won the championship and won. I mean, glass. I mean, it was just, it's insane. If you ever saw a Nick Gage match, that is what it was. But it put him on the map. Um, he he went on the independence and has created a name for himself outside of WWE that I don't think anyone to this day has ever done. Uh, to the point now where WWE would love him back. But... You know, he does have a very successful podcast, a, uh, a toy line, Major Bendy's. <clears throat> I implore you guys, if you love wrestling figures, if you love figures in general, go check out the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast. Check out Bull Airs. Some awesome, awesome stuff. All right. Let's get to some giveaways, right? We got some giveaways this week <clears throat> before we bring on our special guest. All right. So let's go here and let's go. Actually, before we do that. Let's say thank you to all the patrons, the channel members that make the giveaways and everything that we do here possible. I thank you. If you ever want to become a Patreon, get something from me every single month. Check out Patreon. It's on links down on all of the videos. Here's to you guys.
And again, thank you all the channel members, the Patreons. I truly do appreciate it. All right. So let's go to weekly giveaway. All right. All right. We got 55 comments, though prizes this week are, as I find a pen, the wheel, the head-to-head, -head, the mystery box, uh, the give thanks. And I think this, uh, we still have another week or two of give thanks. An Xmas mystery box for Christmas or a surprise me package. Sounds better. All right, here we go. Winner one is, congrats goes out to the Funko Brothers. And Funko Brothers writes, my favorite thing about Christmas is family. And I would like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. And thank you all who uh, commented on the video and said their Christmas traditions and things they love about Christmas. I loved reading all of them. So thank you so much for that. And winner two is uh, Zion TV. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And congrats to both of you. Hit me on Instagram at the underscore luau underscore 23. Boom. All right. Now, let's see. What do we got coming up this week for videos? <clears throat> so, tomorrow, how about a $200 Funko Grail Legendary Mystery Box from Boom Loot? We have looking at uh, collectible shelves that sit behind me on Tuesday on a little short. Funko UK, Freddy Funko, and how to ship from the UK. So, how did I get stuff shipped from Funko Europe to here a little video about that, a little tell how I do it. Um, maybe it's a way that you could do it in the future. It isn't cheap, but you could do that. Uh, we look at Funko Grails, Roger Rabbit, and some more shelves that sit behind me on Thursday and Friday. We rounded out with a $350 worth of signed Funko Pop Mystery Box from OC Celebrity Marketing. Five pops, all signed with a value of 350 bucks, and technically when we open it, it's actually more than that. Actually, one of them almost is this, the value of that whole box. Very, very cool. Also, a lot of people have asked, when is the big Fugitive Toys $2,500 mystery box coming? It will be here, and it will come on New Year's Day. So it is a Sunday, January 1st. So there won't be a video Monday. The big video will drop Sunday, um, probably morning. Um, January 1st will be the big uh, Fugitive Toy Fiasco $2,500 mystery box. The biggest box we've ever opened up and the biggest box uh, we ever will open up uh, on the channel New Year's Day. So that is that. All right. So. Before we bring our special guest, we have five minutes. Uh, it's up to the chat. Anything you guys want to talk about, questions you want to ask me, the floor is yours. And then get ready for our special guest, uh, Dan. And these belts, I'm telling you guys, are absolutely fantastic. If you love figures, if you love wrestling figures, like the ones you see sitting behind me, and you're like, I love the belts, right? This guy designs, makes the belts. I mean, look, this is what comes with the figures, right? It doesn't matter if it's an elite figure, if it's a supreme figure, it's the same kind of belts. They're fair, right? They're fair. But it doesn't hold a candle to something like that. Look at that. 3D printed, hand painted. Look at the strap, the little dimples on the strap. I mean, it's like night and day, guys. Night and day. You see seven bucks a pop got Johnny Depp to sign. I'm going to guess that that was probably from another sign or something like that would be my guess with the Johnny Depp. I wouldn't be surprised they held on to some because um, I think they only had like 95 of them. That's my that's my assumption. Um, I don't think he did any big signings recently. I just think they held stock for something like this. So they they probably had multitudes figured and got and they kept um, they kept that one again. Just my thoughts on that one. But, uh, yeah, I did see that they had those, which was cool. So, yes, I will on Thursday's video share how I do UK shipping. So, truth be told, guys, I, I ship at certain times a couple things um, overseas. So, if there's certain sneakers or collectibles that I like that are not necessarily available here or what, 
it's a lot easier for me to use the service that I use to get them over there and I ship them uh, to almost like a PO box type of thing. And then I had them shipped over here. So uh, a lot like a PO service here where you can build up a certain amount of packages and then at sometimes ship them over. So um, yes, uh, I show you how I do it. Um, the way I do it, I don't pay a monthly fee. Um, it's kind of all built into the price. So I, I've had this address for two years and I've done clothing, I've done sneakers because certain times, you know, pop in the box, other times they won't ship to the United States, but you can ship to the UK and that's what I do. I ship the stuff uh, to my PO box in the UK and then I, they ship it here. So I show you the package, how they package it, how it's shipped, all the details. Uh, if you want to know, that's Wednesday's video. I am looking for the collectible swap 12 was actually my idea. I submitted that uh, past, present, and future. That was sort of like my idea for the swap. So I'm glad that uh, my idea got chosen. So I'm looking forward to that one. The next luau talk, I don't know. I, I have not recorded a luau talk uh, in a little while. So I, I don't know what it will be. Um, I haven't had any good topics. You know, I'm kind of letting, uh, you know, the Apple, uh, applesauce and Gaslecast and people like that run with bands for arms. You know, I'm kind of staying out of that one. But, you know, I think it's awful. I really feel for the people that missed mystery boxes and lost the kind of money that is coming out of the woodwork. Uh, and the people that are on it, you'll find all the information out I'm going to gather uh, in a few weeks. So stay tuned. I probably will hold off the third giveaway for Christmas traditions till next week, but I will do it. So we will see. I know pop, popping some pops, keep it popping, keep it rocking. I, I did not know you guys were down that kind of money with those boxes. It's awful. It's awful. And then fake autographs is even worse. Bad stuff. No, uh, I, I have talked about it. I have talked to Glamma. Yeah, very, very sad. Um, guys, keep track of Glamma Funko. If you were in the Chicago area, uh, she had a storage unit. Uh, lost all of her uh, Funko Pop collection in that storage unit. So I know she's trying to get um, some information as far as a list of those pops and get them out to people. So if you see them trying to sell those pops, you know, you, you might know that uh, that's part of her collection that was stolen. So uh, awful. My heart goes out to, to Glamma, one of the nicest people in the really the queen of a uh, funko pop collecting without a doubt that patriots game that was wild i have not seen it um but I, I did read about it and hear about it so i did do that oh buying wax from atomic cub oh well i have not seen avatar yet uh between christmas and new year's is my rough estimate i will go see it though i will i will go see it all right, are we ready for our special guest? Um, artist, wrestler, extraordinaire, right? If you guys love belts, I mean, this stuff is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Are we ready? Dan Turquist, here we go. How's it going? What is going on, my friend? Oh, you know, living the dream. I bet, I bet. Thank you for coming on. Uh, honor, honor. No, no, anytime. That's like my number one thing is I'm always trying to... Uh get on podcast shows, anything, talk to people. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, I found you, man, I remember, you know, being with like, uh, I was following the major wrestling figure podcast guys. They're not into the, you know, the belts aren't their thing, but the figures are. And then your name got brought up, uh, like forbidden figures. And, you know, I checked you out. I think it was, you did lives and I'm like, man, I gotta, you know, I gotta, these are pretty cool. I mean, I love belts. I grew up loving the belts. And then, you know, it's like you guys bring it where it's weird. You look at these companies that make the figures, the belts are kind of chintzy. Even if you get an, an ultimate or a supreme figure, the belts are still just so ho-hum. Yeah, I agree. I uh, I kind of expected with like elites and supremes that the belts would get um, a little bit better. I know that there's limitations to what you can do in manufacturing, you know, and, and mass production. Cause they use a lot of stickers and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but that's just when you're making, you know, I make 20 a week or something, they make 20 a, a minute, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
so i mean explain the process that it is for you to do it which i just find i one i find the art and the ability to, to that i know you paint these by hand absolutely i mean amazing yeah um so i'd actually like only made one custom figure before i ever made my first belt so i had no painting experience like whatsoever wow. And so it was, that was a, a long process. I look back at some of the first belts I made and they're terrible. But, uh, you know, I do 3D modeling is like my actual day job. So the part that part wasn't and I had some 3D printers. So that part mm -hmm. wasn't really a uh, wasn't really the hard part. It's just been the, like learning how to paint and learning, you know, different pieces of the craft are. Uh, have been the hardest part, but the process, you know, once you get a design down, um, uh, it'd be boring to sit here and talk about how to 3D model something. It's kind of convoluted. There's a lot, you know, draw lines and go back and extrude and different things like that. But once you print it, you got to clean it in an acetone bath or an alcohol bath, and you got to let it cure. It's UV cured. So it's wow. like just from it takes a few hours to 3D print a couple of them. But like once you got to prime it, base coat it, seal it, all that stuff, it takes like four or five days just to do a couple. Wow. I and mean, that's just amazing. I can't even. You have the winged eagle, and did you get all Atlantic? Yes, I got the winged okay. eagle and the all Atlantic, which are fat. I mean, the winged e wing winged eagle. I had not put on a figure yet, but that sits there, and the all Atlantic sits behind me with uh, good old Orange Cassidy. I like. I think I do the all Atlantic pretty well. I'm not a big fan Ooh. of my winged eagle. Uh, I that's probably like the most the number one belt that people like ask for, but. Uh, I mean, it's, it's probably the most popular belt in, I mean, maybe wrestling wrestling history when people, and, you know, the, the talk is if Cody wins it, he'd love yeah. to bring it back, which I don't know if they'd allow him to do it. I have, a, I have a funny feeling I don't think they'd allow him to do it, but, man, it would be so cool if they did. I saw somebody did a, uh, like, a more modern version of it with, like, the WWE logo and stuff, yep. and I don't know, maybe something like that, but... I, they need that belt as a big logo for their company and stuff like that. You know, they give it to all sports teams when they win their championships. Yeah. And I doubt they ever go back. Um, whoever asked my CAD software is I use uh, Inventor. I saw it in the comments. Yeah, QuickDraw was asking what CAD, what CAD program. Yeah, I use uh, – it's Inventor. It's an Autodesk program. It's just something I learned in college. Some guys use Blender and stuff. But I mean, comparing years, I mean, I've only ever seen Forbidden Figures, which, you know, I, I'm hearing Forbidden Figures is not going to do them anymore, get all these orders out, and then I heard she's done. I don't know if that's true or not. We'll see. Uh, she'll be back. I would think so. I think she just got overwhelmed, you know. But, I mean, I've compared hers and yours, and there's some things different that I like better on yours. So Appreciate that. Yeah, I, I always tell everybody that, like, I think her stuff's a lot better than mine. Just just personally, she also charges like three times what I do. So you better not, get what you pay for cheap, if it's better. It's, it's um, I think her problem is she let it on websites and the orders flooded in. And then she's looking at, you know, six, seven months of people order. And then people would complain like, you know, we all know people, how people are sometimes when you when you spend the money and it's sitting there. Yep. And, you know, you say six months and seven comes, eight's there. It, people sometimes get a little salty. Yeah, I understand that. That's why I try to stay like uh, I kind of call myself like an indie band. I try to stay like under the radar. I, I want it to be hard to get belts for me almost yep. because like I, I I have I work, you know, like a 50 hour a week job. I don't have a ton of time to spend on making belts. So and I don't ever take any. You know this. I don't even think I've taken the money for the two you no. asked. <laughs> I'm, uh, What's the pay power? Yeah, <laughs> I, can, I, I can get it to you. I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I live in, you know, rural America and I don't have uh, I have a really good job so yep. i don't do this stuff for money i do this stuff just for the passion so it's like and you, you most, can tell that i mean most of the money just goes good. back to paying you know buying resin and i think this year alone i've bought four more 3d printers and it's just just like i'll look at the paypal and i'll be like what do i do with this <laughs> you know like <laughs> i was like i guess i should buy like make, make i keep telling myself like every day i ask myself how can i make better belts faster that's like the only thing i want to do right so i I just keep, I'm like, maybe more printers. And now I think I'm at a point where like, I have enough printers. It's like, I need more me's. So the painting takes forever. As you can tell, I mean, to paint a bunch I mean, of flags and stuff like that, it's time consuming. Oh yeah. I mean, that might be, I, and I've seen a lot of the pictures of all your other belts. 
that all Atlantic may be one of the nicest belts uh, that you've ever made. It's it's one of my favorites. I just made a couple, and I actually found out something interesting about that belt. I don't know if the one you have is. Uh, I'll answer that question in a second. Someone just asked about three D printers, but uh, the first promo pics of the All Atlantic have the Mexican flag backwards. If you oh, look, okay. I don't know if yours is because I definitely oh, was making it like that. I guess the green goes towards the pole on the Mexican flag. Didn't know this. Just found this out on discord. You can see the convo because I was looking for a reference photo to paint some yesterday. Yep. And I was like, I looked at the reference picture and I was like, man, the Mexican flags backward on here. Cause I'm so used to looking at it forward, green, white, red. Yep. And uh, then I look and I see that it's, they've made both versions because apparently the guy originally did green, white, red, but the pole is on that side, the, this side. So, uh, I don't know what yours is. There's, I also have messed up apparently, but I'm going to say if AEW messed the belt up, that I'm going to give myself that bogey, <laughs> but I won't mess it up going forward. I mean, that is, that's a beautiful, beautiful belt. And here we'll get, we'll get quick draw asking yeah. what type of 3d printers do you prefer to use? So that's a, that's a good way to pose the question, right? So I have an FDM printer. I have an Ender three, which I don't know if I have anything big print. Oh, like an FDM is uh, like a filament based printer. They do bigger stuff. So I'm working on the Dragon Zord from Power Rangers. Oh, wow. So this is like a base piece. The FDM printers do big stuff. And then I have um, a Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. I actually have three of those. Um, they're pretty good resin printers. Resin printers use a liquid with the UV, like I was talking about. That's what you use to make belts. And then I, uh, I also have, I recently got a, what is the brand? Elegoo Saturn. So I have an Elegoo Saturn also. So I've been branching out. I've been doing some minis and stuff. I have a a Moon Knight mini that I was painting. I printed this and oh, I was wow. painting this too. So I, I don't know. I've been trying to. Uh, yeah, the Dragon Sword is really cool. It's uh, it's going to be super tall. I just I have all the pieces printed. I haven't um, got around to putting it together because I'm so busy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, congrats. I know you just got married too. So yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. That yeah. Trying to manage like, that's why I'm just happy. I don't have like a website to worry about. Right. Cause if I had a bunch of people's money sitting there, I'd be quite concerned, but I was able to take <laughs> off like most of September and October and then come back. And then in the first day I had like over a hundred people hit me up. So. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, your name gets brought up in, uh, you know, in the guy's um, Facebook group, which, you know, you gotta be a Patreon. So it's, it's like major figure collectors. And when they talk belts, I mean, your name is right there with forbidden figures. And, uh, obviously I, I, I think she'll stay in it. We'll see. Yeah, yeah she will. Um, but, she had that deal with Zack Ryder where she was making his belts and stuff too. So, you know, yeah, I know she, he did, uh, they, she did like a hundred piece run of his, and uh it, it's weird some of the belts they didn't you know that she's done she never they never come back which is weird i don't know why like that gcw for whatever reason gcw seems like one that uh, a lot of people want for him you know with him winning it huh. you know to add to his figure but huh i make the gcw belt i uh i'm friends with the guy who made the real belt Hi oh, wow. hyperon i can't remember I, I messed it up on my last podcast so I said Hyperon. I think it's Hyperon, but yeah. He's I mean, how do you, do you like, do you like take a photo and then you're actually like drawing it in CAD? Yeah. Then... So, well, you could do it a couple different ways, right? So if you can, if you're lucky enough to get a true vector file of it, like some people have vector files from shirts and different stuff yep. like that. Um, you can kind of build it with a vector file, but most of the time I'm, I do a lot of real obscure belts, like indie belts and stuff like yep. that. So yeah, a lot of times you're getting, you're compiling whatever kind of, really terrible pictures that people have sent you and you're kind of just tracing them and building shapes off of pieces like that. Man, Here's one of the cooler ones that I've been working on. I'll show you. I don't think I'll ever actually sell this belt, but this is one of the all Japan triple crown belts. Oh, that is cool. So these chains are real chains on here and wow. they, they, they move. You can't they, I see they hang down. This took me forever, right? This was like Vader had this. I'm knocking stuff over on my desk. Um, there's three belts. So Vader had these. But they have hand-painted straps, and they have the uh, the chains and stuff. And, man, I, they, it's been a nightmare trying to make them all year. That is cool. 
but I had to figure out a creative way to get these chains on here. And so I actually made uh, pockets. So they let, they actually run through the plastic pieces. There's pockets for the chains. Wow. That's the kind of thing that I'm way more interested. I'm not interested in being some store that sells, you know, 80 yep. million versions of a belt. I would rather like send me your local indie fed belt and I'll be like, yeah, let's make that. Granted, I don't have nearly the time I did at the start of this, but Yep, yep, yep. Because, I mean, everyone, at you know, what's it like? And it's like, man, to be married and then to work a 50-hour-plus job and then to balance all that out, I mean, it's that's nuts. Yeah, yeah. And I, I tried my best to, to make time for all the stuff, but I, uh, I've never made the gift of the gods. Someone was at, yeah, I haven't made the gift of the gods. I can't. I mean, that's the one with, like, real big plates on it, isn't it? got medallions in the center of it not bad i mean it's, it's a, kind of like a cooler one yeah i like that belt the chains the straps though yeah i don't there's actual chains that go in between the real belt but i couldn't i tried a few times to do like wire ties with the chains it's, it you're very limited when you're dealing with something that's you know i think nine millimeters tall <laughs> So, and you were used to be a wrestler, if I'm not mistaken. Sure right? did, yeah. Yeah, I was an indie wrestler. That's actually, so if if I was to tell a story of how I made my very first belt, I had a custom made of me. I was a wrestler, indie wrestler for five years, and uh, I had, like, won a championship. So I had my custom figure, and I was like, hmm, what's a cooler thing to do than you got to have your own belt, right? So yeah. I had won this world title. So I sat down, and I drew it, and I 3D printed it, and then I basically posted it on uh, – like a Facebook group and people are all like, Oh, that's really cool. Custom. Uh, where's the belt from? And I'd be like, Oh, I made it. You know, and they'd be like, Oh, could you make this belt? And it's like, <laughs> oh, sure. I could probably make that, you know? And then you sit down and you make the, like it was probably the second belt I ever made was like the Pacific heavyweight NWA Pacific heavyweight or something. And it's like, you post so that guy gets the belt posts it. Three more people message you. Hey man, I saw you made that Pacific belt. Could you make the NWA United States? Well, sure, I guess, you know, and then it's like the next thing, you know, you've sold five belts and that's reaches out to 50 people, 50 people hit oh, you yeah. up, reaches out. I think this time last year I had less than 300 followers on Instagram and I think I'm close to like almost I'm at 4,500, I think now or close, oh, yeah. right under it. I did. I was on MDT last week with some belts I'd made for him, My Damn Toys, yeah. and uh, that was, you know, really helped bring a lot of people to the Instagram. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. But as you and know, I try to do everything through the Discord. Yep. So it's just it's way, way. way easier. There's a, some of the guys, I guess there's a clothing company guy does figure shirts that like only works through his Instagram. It's a super private Instagram. I would like mm -hmm. ideally like to get to a point where I have enough people just in, I probably do have enough people just in that Discord. I would, I would say, busy. listen at your Discord and the conversations, I, I would think you do. Yeah, and I like that someone was asking me this like last week. They were talking about belts, and I was just like, Man, I'm just a dude who makes belts for my friend, like, or for my friends. You know, that's that's kind of what I am. I, I try, like I said, like I try to, to not, I'm not trying to, you know, be out here selling, you know, hey, you got a deal's going, man. You know, <laughs> that's too, like, I've asked people, had people ask me, like, how can you, uh, man, how can you just make all these belts without getting any money up front or anything? And I'm like, Cause, I can guarantee you, 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 I don't know if you ever see on the discord a lot, but there's like the in stock part page. Yep. If I post something on there, it's, it's sold in 10 minutes. Yeah. It's like, so it's, it's, it's like a field day for other people. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. Hey, if your order falls through, man, like there's like 10 dudes who are more than happy no, to take absolutely. everything you wanted. So I, I think that that is with my limited schedule, the best way to, actually run you know what i'm doing oh for sure for sure and there's some people that just they don't care it's like you know i mean i would love these belts if it takes you a year year and a half it doesn't matter yeah i've had some guys i don't think i've gone that long but i've got a couple people who get bigger orders and stuff like that and that's kind of how we have to work the system oh, yeah. you know yeah i think i shot you a list i said this one this one this one i don't care what long it takes doesn't matter because yeah and i kind of like to do the uh like one belt at a yep. time for the first, just cause like my product is different than there's some other people that make figure belts and stuff. And that's great. Cause obviously there's enough people who want them. Right. So I kind of like to have one, you get one in hand. Cause let's not, 
let's not worry about sending each other, you know, 50 bucks and then send yeah, 50 yeah. bucks back. Like 15 is easy, right? Um, so I like to do it like that. I mean, yeah, when you see them, it's like, you know, for me, I love to just display them. And then for me, I've always been a belt guy. I love the belts. It's just, and then you buy the figures and you look at them and it's like, man, they're just, they're so, eh. I mean, they can be so much better. And then you look at other people that don't, they love the figures. I, I think uh, what Myers and Cardona, they always, they're not belt guys. They don't care about the belts. You know, it's just, it's there. Okay. It doesn't matter. But some yeah. people it's like, man, the belt is just, that's the key that sets the whole figure off. That and all the belts can't say WWF. Yep. And a lot of the times, you know, there's like one-off belts that guys had for one day, you know, or something like that. And they're not going to make a figure of that. Like the, nope. there's like the NWA, like uh, Heritage Midwestern or something. I think uh, I have it somewhere. I can't think. But that's one that like Wyndham had it, right? Barry Wyndham. He had it and he was on TV for a couple weeks and then he was just gone. Yep, you never see it again. And then yeah. some of them, I mean, it takes, uh, I'm surprised like Jax with the AEW, they've never done uh, Jade with the, the TNT belt. And, I was just talking to someone about how that's wild, yeah. how we don't have a TBS yet. I make a ton of that TBS belt. And it's like, the fact that there isn't one mm -mm. is crazy. Because the TNT oh, was one for a while before they had come out with a TNT figure belt. Yep. That was like, I was selling a ton of those. And then now it's not every, hard. Every... it doesn't seem like it's a, a horror. It's not an intricate belt. You know, no, but it's super easy. Same thing with the plated. women's one. I would. I'm surprised the new. I mean, granted, it might take. You know, it's only been probably like six, seven months. I'll but, be you know, curious to see how that woman's one looks. That woman's one was a nightmare. I actually, I don't know if anybody knows Riot Zoo on Instagram. He makes belts too. He um, sent me his file for that one because I like made it three or four times and didn't like it. He and I did like a little swap. I get, sent him some WWWF stuff and he sent mm -hmm. me that one. So. Yeah, that's an that's, a, that's an interesting belt. Yeah, I have it somewhere on here. My table is just full of stuff. <laughs> a bunch of IWGP V fives and those are great ones. I got a small. You, you make the the Rev belt. Uh, I think that's Rev. Uh, the one that um... Rev Pro. Yeah. Yes. 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 That's yeah, I made. I made. Uh, I made a copy of that for the guy who actually made the real belt. I think JB's Toys or something. Oh wow. Yeah. That's yeah, a that's cool a cool one. belt. Yeah. So what what's like. What's the hardest belt for you to make? Uh, anything that's dual plated, right? Um, but this is these don't count, right? Because I'm these were for a guy who'd really wanted them. I'm never trying these again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see here. The AEW title sucked. I got one right here. This is a scrap one. Wow. So. Anything that's got this super intricate dual plating, yep. well, see how it almost looks too silver? Yep. It's it's because it is too silver, because it's got the gold over the top. It just doesn't look good. I have another version that I don't have on my desk that I could show you that I'm going to roll with that looks a lot better. But any of the belts that have a lot of intricate dual plating, it's a nightmare because you got to pick a base coat. Are you going to go with silver? Are you going to go with gold? I like my silver top effect a lot better than I like my gold like when you go over it to do the dual plating. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, none of them are too crazy hard when I think about it. I'm trying to look at my desk. Have you got anyone asking for the AEW with the Burberry strap yet? Yeah, I, I'm working <laughs> on that. Um, <laughs> I have it. It's a little light, the strap. Uh, I thought about trying to do a wash on it, but uh, I actually have the uh, – this one doesn't – I made the MJF main plate this morning. The name on here says MJF down there. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I got a guy. I'm going to send him some pictures of it or send it to him to take some pictures. Um, but I should have that. I'm hoping by the end of the week. That was one like it was I think in the discord I posted the link to the the Barbary that I'd found within like five minutes of it being on TV. But uh, I saw that belt in the middle of the ring, and I instantly was just like, "Oh God damn it!" I was like, <laughs> "Not more belts," because they did the they did us dirty with the All Atlantic and the trios. They did them like yeah. within three weeks of each other. So I just, I have a uh, video on my Snapchat of me filming uh, Dynamite, and they're like, "Big announcement!" And then it was like belts under uh, black, you know. I was like, yeah. "God damn!" It. I was like, "God damn it!" More belts now. I gotta make these <laughs> and trio belt to boot. Yeah, really. Because I had to like, I kind of burst on the scene on my Instagram. Really, I did the V five yep. uh, when um, 
when the IWGP V5 debuted, I did that um, that night. I like stayed up super late and went into work late the next day to draw it and 3D model it that night. And then that's, like, that's a cool. It's a cool belt. It's different. Yeah, I got a couple of them up here somewhere. Um, they might be on my back table. Someone in the comments asked about the smoking skull. I got one right here. That's a. I love that belt. That's a killer one. Yeah. Yeah, I love Stone Cold. That's my era of WWE. Like, I always say I'm a big eagle guy over a winged eagle guy, and, like, I love the Smoking Skull, too. Hang yeah, on, big, big Eagle was a, was a good one. That's kind of like – I like that one. I, I didn't want to pull my laptop off. B5, though. Oh, wow, yeah. That's, that's really good. Yeah. This one needs um, a couple more snaps and stuff, but – yeah, I like this belt. This one's not too hard to paint. It, it sucks that it has like a million different colors of uh, gems across the side. Yeah. But, you know. Very cool. So what do you, I mean, is it like a paint that you actually go in and paint the little everything? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm trying to show a paint, you know. We're talking quite tiny paint brushes. <laughs> It's like that. I don't know if you ever watched SpongeBob, but there's one where he's painting, like plucks like a like a pimple hair or whatever, and yeah, like paints yeah. something with it. It's like that. Yeah. Um, there's some tricks and stuff to it, and uh, learning like it was weird. I wouldn't have expected. I my boss and I talk about this a lot because he used to do cars, and we talk about how to get really good finishes and stuff and paint. And it's like you would never think this, but you have to almost learn chemistry of like you got to use an oil-based paint. And then if you use an oil-based paint, you can come back with a non-acetone based remover or whatever, and take paint that gets on top of that. And then if you use this sealer, it won't interact with this paint and all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's been a cool process to learn a lot of stuff, but I, mostly I'm excited about just like all the great people in the community who I've got to meet and talk to and, and, and do stuff, you know, with like uh curb stomp customs. And I did a collab over the summer where we did some, we gave away like a Wheeler Uta pack where there was a pure title with it and some, some of the decals for custom wheelers. And it, it's been cool to talk with people like that. That's cool. Cause yeah, I mean, I mean, there are other people that make them, but I mean, it's like forbidden figures in you when I you know started to pay a lot of attention are really the two that a lot of people talk about. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I'm hindered by the fact I don't use Facebook anymore. So I don't, I'm not in any of those groups. I have people hit me up and be like, Hey man, we got a figure group on Facebook. I'm like, I don't do Facebook anymore. Facebook's <laughs> just full of people's grandparents arguing about politics and stuff like that. I, I heart, I really don't like, I don't, do you follow me on Instagram? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I don't Instagram on the weekends. Like I, it's just, I don't really do social media on the weekends. I pretty much live in the middle of nowhere and I'd like to keep it that way. So I'm a, <laughs> I'm, I'm strange in that way, I guess, but I don't like social media really. I, I, I'm probably going to get in trouble on Twitter. I tweeted out a link to this YouTube yeah. stream on Twitter a few minutes ago. And then I was reading that. I guess you can't do that on Twitter anymore. You can't tweet out links to other social media. Yeah, it's like, well, who knows? Yes. Elon Musk. You never know. So who knows? But I just, I wish everybody could come to the discord and at the same time, not everybody, because <laughs> I'd like to yeah. keep it pretty, you know, selective but uh oh here's another cool one i haven't posted this yet but the owen hart uh Ooh. The, re the real owen hart belt yep because it didn't come with the actual belt i this is a prototype i'd made that is cool yeah the one he came with i think it was like a ringside exclusive was kind of chintzy yeah i don't I guess they don't have the rights for it probably yeah it's it's yeah do the best they can it, it looks good for what it is, but if anybody is interested, they can hit me up for that one. I'm trying to get to a point, too, where I can do, like, I'd like to do some more like, Discord exclusive stuff. Or, like, I talked about doing some belt packs with a guy where, like, people who have famously owned, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, Kenny Omega is probably a more recent one. Like, for even for like 10 bucks less than what they'd cost you, you can get like the impact, the TNA, the triple a and the AW, you know? So that'd normally be 60 bucks. You get it for 50 or like FTR. You can get all the FTR belts or that's a cool so one. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to get to a point where I do stuff like that, but I've been telling myself I'm going to do all this stuff for two years. And at the same, I keep telling myself like, when I slow down, I'm going to, you know, but it's, 
it's like I was saying, where it's like the first belt led to the next two, leads yep. to the next four, leads to the next, you know, 12, leads to the next, you know, 20, 100, the next thing, you know, everybody wants them. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely, I and mean, I could see, you know, with Forbidden Figures, what, what drove her mad. There's no doubt about it that you have a website and you can sell out. I mean, I, I couldn't even imagine what she sold out, what she sold in a matter of an hour. Yeah, I would be worried about I would be like I would be interested to see what like the sales, how quickly things went on, you know, how quickly things just like you you make your website and the next thing you know it's like you have ten thousand orders. You're like that yeah. one person. Oh yeah. And you know, they're 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 taking money and shipping, it's all done, and it's like then that's where it gets weird for a lot of people. Yeah, I've had to learn a lot of this stuff, right? Like the first belt I ever shipped. I literally shipped it in an envelope with a stamp. And I was like, this is how you do it, right? I was like, it's the mail. <laughs> that shows you how much I knew. And the guy waited like 45 days. I ended up remaking them and shipping them through Pirate Ship, how he taught me how. Yep. Um, and he got them before he ever got the stamp one. And I was just like, <laughs> holy crap. I was like, I can't even believe this. So, uh I've learned a lot. I got a label printer now and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm moving my way into the dark ages, but uh, <laughs> I've just like, I'm, you know, I, I don't know anything about how any of this stuff, I don't want to be a businessman. I just want to be a customizer. You know, I like to do work with really cool customizers and help be that missing piece to like guys collections and stuff like that. That's way more what I'm about. I'm way more about making a connection with the person who's going to get the cool belt, you know? And, and I know like I sold that dude a winged Eagle for his, you know, uh, his Hogan that he's going to put on his display or whatever. Like, that's so cool. Like, that's what I'm way more about. Oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, there's not a lot of people, there's not many people that I know of at least that do them. And there's a lot of people that have the demand for it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple other people. Like the first dude ever was WWE figure artist. I don't know if you'd ever seen him. He was like the OG. Mm -hmm. A lot of dudes had his stuff at first. He's, he's up and quit since then, but it's like, yeah, Forbidden and me, and, and there's a couple other people, Ride Zoo, and uh, there's, every day you see another person pop up trying to make yeah, it. Try it, yeah. And then, but you, you know, some of them, it's like you look at it, it's like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, that's how mine were at first, too. So I was just telling someone, I was like, I go back and look at the old stuff on my Instagram, and I'm like, these are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been going back and tweaking my, I just, I did the, uh, the I finally did the WWE Championship. I pushed off for a long time on the WWE and the AEW just because you get it with every single elite and every single AEW figure. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm would much rather spend my time making belts that you can't get at all. And then that's kind of, I did the same thing with the winged Eagle. I was like, I'm not making it. You can get it with a bunch of elites, but I, uh, I finally made the, the WWE championship. That's cool. And uh, the first one I ever sent out, I think was too small. So I just hit the guy up the other day and told him like, Hey man, I, uh, I think those are too small. What do you think? And he like sent me some pictures. He's like, I don't know. And I was like, I'm just going to send you the bigger size for free. Like, cause I feel like it's bad on my part. So I've been trying to rectify some of the crappy belts I've sent out over the years with guys as I find them. And I mean, if you make that one, I could, you could probably make a killer with that. When Daniel Bryan did that sort of like with the, Oh, the seashell. Yeah. 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 That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be very hard to make a strap for, but I'm sure I could find something a burlap sack or something and cut it. If you can pull the Burberry AEW belt out, I mean, yeah, I, you could make that. Grab it real quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I have this is my test piece. We'll see how oh, it ends up looking. It looks just like a scarf. So, yep, yep, yep. I'm sure that's what. Um, did you see the video of how they made it? Uh -uh, I didn't see the video of how they made it, it. I guess Pro Wrestling Tees made it. And they oh, like wow. direct, direct to garment printed that logo on a strap. Interesting. So, that's something that I could do too, I guess. But I, I like I like that they did it. I thought that was very cool. But then when I saw it, I'm like, man, I bet he in that Discord's firing up for that. <laughs> they missed a really golden opportunity not to make that say MJF across the middle of the belt, though. That's true. I really expected it to be that, and I was going to be like, God damn it, I got to model a new belt. <laughs> 
And st- this sucks about this was this came in a pack of like 20 different fucking patterns. Sorry <laughs> if I, I'm not a cuss, but um, and this is the only one that, that was that this pattern. That. I'm like, great. I'm going to end up with all these pink and, and you know, looking like legally blonde stuff on, on you know. I, it'll be whatever. I'm sure that like the the blue be, the blue big eagle famously yeah. got super dirty and, and they had to change it out pretty quick. I wouldn't be shook if if the strap ends up changing by the end of Jim JF's run. It depends. I think they might keep the bell on him for a little while. Yeah, but the strap might have to change. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see about that. We'll see how it goes. I'm sure they have probably three or four of them. Yeah, they'll. Probably keep the belt on him until Wardlow's ready to beat him for it. Something like that. I mean, I don't, eh, you know, we'll see what they do. I always am a, I love Kenny, man. I, oh, I mean, he, yeah, Kenny's, Kenny, and it's funny. Of course, it had to work out this way, but CM Punk and Kenny Omega are my two favorite wrestlers. So, of course, they have to get into a shoot fight. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, CM Punk, you know, he, I think he's rightfully so. CM Punk's old school and AEW is kind of the new school. And there's differences, and I get it. I get it too. I came up in a wrestling locker room where you, if you have a problem with a guy, you fight the guy. I mean, that's indie wrestling. Like, I just, I was on a show with a guy one time, and he was telling me that uh, he was like, this dude showed up who was out of town, and he was like, this guy showed up with the same gimmick as me. And I was like, all right, well, you go up to him and you tell him, like, hey, man, this is my territory. That's my gimmick. Yeah, I, you either don't do that gimmick here or I beat the shit out of you. Like, those are the two <laughs> options. Like, I'm sorry, you know, but like, that's how it has to be. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's cool listening to what is it? Kevin Nash has a podcast and he goes back to like the old school stuff. And some of his stories are just like, wow. Well, even like, uh, but Ventura like almost got stabbed after you know supposedly hurting Hogan and stuff like that. Yeah, like or Arn Anderson did get stabbed. Did he not? Like, yeah, wrestling's crazy. I had to get escorted by a cop out of a show at a fair one night in a small town because it's it's a super small town. I came out and I'm trashing the town right because that's what you do. I'm the heel. Um, I'm like everybody in this town's a stupid redneck. I was like you guys couldn't even pay me enough money to come here ever again. I was just talking crap. Like, oh, you guys are drunk rednecks. And there actually was a drunk redneck there who uh, did not like what I was saying. And he, he was trying to fight me. So luckily there were some police who, like, escorted me to the locker room. Um, it cracks me up. So, I mean, tell, tell me about, I mean, so it was five years of indie wrestling? Yeah. So, what, like 14? I probably, No, I started at 15, and I quit right at the start of the pandemic. And spo- spoiler alert, I don't think but I might be coming back for a couple shows. But I was uh, – <laughs> Yeah, I got some of the stuff's on my YouTube, um, some of my matches and stuff. I, I wrestled for a while. I was like tag teams for a little while, and then I broke up and did some singles stuff, and I was a pretty big heel for a while. And then I actually did a Buried Alive match, like an indie oh, wow. Buried Alive match. It, it, I'm pretty proud of it. We built a pretty good setup. It looked fairly realistic, um, as realistic as you can at an indie show for Buried Alive. But uh, we did a Buried Alive match, and then I went away for a while, and then I came back as like a big baby face, so it was pretty cool. But, That's uh, cool. That's yeah, I, I liked wrestling, but at the same time, being an indie wrestler made me hate wrestling. Um, like straight up, like because it's like all the dudes are jaded in indie wrestling, and they don't want to talk about like you could you can't watch wrestling. They'd be like, "Oh, you Mark, you watch wrestling? You're talking about SmackDown, you Mark." Um, I hear Heather, Heather. I can make a Mandalore. I've made some random. Uh, belts and stuff like that I've, i made guys like logos and stuff oh where is it i have my shop is a mess right now i call my my office a shop i i do 3d prints of people's logos and stuff for like twitch and things like that i don't know who ed or heather are but uh hardcore heather was her wrestling name and ed was uh eddie gonzalez no i wrestle in like the mid Mid South area, like Southern Illinois, like St. Louis, Indianapolis, that kind of area. I've wrestled James Ellsworth, though. Oh wow! And I've been on shows with like Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, and uh, oh, with Cowboy Bob Orton a few times. And I've wrestled at wrestle we're at the same place where wrestling in the Chase used to be. Okay. I know wrestling at the Chase in St. Louis is a big yep. thing. I've uh, like for Larry Mastic and stuff. I've wrestled some cool shows. I've wrestled for USA championship wrestling, a few places like that, but 
you know, it's hard to get a, uh, I almost think it would be cooler if I could go back and wrestle now with like the following that I have and the people I talk to and stuff. But indie wrestling was fun. Had its ups and downs. You don't you know you never make much money. <laughs> <laughs> Any big injuries? I uh, all but broke my ankle one time. It oh, sucked. Wow. I was in a cage match and I was wrestling this dude and I did a spot where I like put my leg on the bottom rope and jump up to like kick him, you know, and I came down and here's the dude's foot and here's mine. And I did this with my ankle and uh, <laughs> it was like a triple threat thing. And uh, I'm like, I fall down instantly. And I was like, I think I broke my ankle. And the guy was like, oh, shit, really? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, all right, we'll just work you in the corner. The other dude has no idea what's happening. Comes over, grabs me, like punches me, and hits me with a suplex. <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, oh, you son of a bitch. I was like, oh, I could feel my ankle just like moving around. But that was the worst injury I ever had. You know, I've had like busted nose and stuff like that a few times. But that ankle thing was terrible. It, uh, The doctor told me if I wasn't wearing like tall wrestling boots, like it would have been a legit like Bad. fracture yeah Oof. what do you think of like any uh you know like the death match stuff stuff would you ever do something like that with like the the light tubes and panes of glass and stuff like that i'm lucky that we mostly wrestled at like junior highs and high schools and stuff so there weren't many death matches there's a big death match <laughs> place that started up uh in my area, in my territory, you know, as you'd say, yeah. after I quit, I used to wrestle this dude. His name was Cash Borden. He was like a legit deathmatch wrestler. That's like what he does is like light tubes. And he does the spot a lot where he takes the wooden straws and puts them in dudes' heads and like hits them, you know, yeah, yeah. your head. And uh, he and I worked a program for like six months. And it was funny because I was like, the first time we ever wrestled, we kind of knew each other. But I was like, what do you want to do out there, man? And he's like telling me these spots. And I had had an ingrown toenail at the time. And he's telling me his spot. He wants to like do a step on my foot and turn around, whatever. And then later in the, I was like, I don't think we should do that. And he was like, I thought you thought it was really lame or something. I was like, no, nah, it's just my toe is extremely painful to step on it. But we had a hard, we had one hardcore match and it was cool. It wasn't anything crazy. It was like, we had a bunch of chairs and uh, some tables and he did a spot with a skateboard where he did like a jump off the side of the rope with a skateboard and he landed on me. And that kind of sucked because I put my hands like this and I had like the truck marks on my forearms, Ooh. super painful, but I got to design and actually make the belts for the indie company that I wrestled at. So that was cool. Also like, like the, the belts that they would use in the show you got to design. So I designed the world heavyweight championship that they did use. And I got to keep that when I quit because it was mine. <laughs> and then the tag titles, I actually, made them i designed them and made them etched them myself and painted them and everything it was such a long process but they're pretty cool i got a, a mini version of them they look basically like this oh cool they were kind of like the uh global force wrestling where the other one is a lion looking like inverse yeah. of this so they both look at each other wow so those were cool but it, it, it it's cool to meet but like at the same time, one of those things I've seen about being an indie wrestler kind of sucks. It's like you don't you can't be a fan, right? You can't go up, you can't be on a show with Cowboy Bob Orton and run up and be like, Oh my god, Cowboy Bob Orton, you're my favorite wrestler. I love Cowboy Bob Orton and Randy Orton, it's so cool. Like you have to look at yourself as equal with these dudes. Yeah. You don't you can't go and run and take pictures and you can't go and run and like act like a fangirl to these dudes because it's like we're wrestling in the same ring in the same arena. Like you respect them. Wrestling's all about respect. Shake everybody's hand and, and show them. But at the same time, it's like they're here to do a job. I'm here to do a job. They do not want to, you know, hear have to tell you a thousand stories about you know, WrestleMania two and WrestleMania one. Like they're not here to do that. They they yeah. do that with the marks outside who they're making money. But the last thing they want to do is while they're lacing their boots, have to be like, yeah, I met Mr. T or you know, like I wrestled with Honky Tonk Man. Um, at a show and he was like all about it. He wanted to sit in the back and like gather everybody around and talk about all these stories. And then you get other dudes like Ricky, the dragon, Steve boat. All he did was sit in the back and like watch everybody talk about their matches, like talk out their matches. And it was so interesting to watch like one of the greatest wrestling minds ever here, like two dudes on an indie show, just be like, yeah, I'm going to whip you outside. And it's like, you could be asking one of the greatest wrestlers in the world. And like, he's sitting here and he probably has a million ideas of how to make your match better, but it's like, you don't want to come off as some like, you know, big Mark talking about that stuff. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it was interesting. That's cool. And I, I also, I think I've known you're a big Boston fan. 
Yeah, yeah. So my father, uh, my godfather is from Connecticut. So I got my Garnett and my Brady jersey back there. Yeah, I'm a Boston sports guy. Don't talk about the finals. (laughs) I I think they might have another shot this year. I 3D printed a Celtics logo. I was trying to get the colors, multicolor to work on it. But yeah, I, uh, yeah, we hopefully we do. I mean, Tatum was killing it. Oh yeah, I, I think they got another they got another run in them this year, and I don't think there's another team in the West or anything that's you know, it's tough when you run into Curry and they they were hot, so. Go Cubs! That's my father-in-law. He loves the Cubs. Oh yeah, there we go. Comment. Yeah, everybody. It's like I'm in Cardinals country for baseball, and then we don't have a football team or a basketball team in Southern Illinois because they lost the Rams, and we never had a basketball. We had the St. Louis Hawks in like the '60s or something. I'm surprised they don't. There's not a basketball team in St. Louis. But closest basketball team is uh, Memphis Grizzlies, and there's not really a lot of Grizzlies fans. No, no. Morant, you know, decent player. Yeah, he's good. A lot of guys I work with went to Murray, so he's pretty overhyped. And you never know, you might Brady might make a return next year. Yeah, I've heard that. We'll see. <laughs> I've already committed. I got my Mac Jones gear. And people always talk like, oh, you're not gonna be a Patriots fan now. Brady's gone. And I'm like, no. I uh I got my Mac Jones, my Mac Jones cup and stuff. So I'm I'm in here for the long fall hall, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> How about any uh what do we I'm trying to think some of the new belts out there? Uh obviously I guess Sasha Banks gonna go to New Japan, so I'm sure. Uh, that women's championship will be something that people want to see. They just made a women's championship, actually. Yep. Yeah, IWGP women's championship or whatever. That'll be cool. I keep hearing that uh, WWE is going to get new belts soon. So They keep talking about it. I would have thought when you, if you're going to put both belts on Roman and leave it on for, obviously, he's going to have him for the year, you'd make like one special belt. Yeah, they missed an opportunity from like branding and stuff to make it a one universal. But I or bet you could they, have done that and bring the big gold back. You know, people love that belt, and they just sort of have no issues with bringing that one back. Could you imagine if they just brought back the big gold and the winged eagle? It would make like the whole internet wrestling community so happy. <laughs> Everyone would lose their mind, even if it did have to have that gaudy WWE logo at the top instead of the WWF logo. I don't have a big, big. I have a Sting big gold on my other work table I yeah, it's, a great, it's a great belt i'm surprised they left it retired i would thought that you would bring that puppy back so classic it is kind of like the championship belt it seemed like for a while every indie show i don't know if you go to a lot of indie shows tons of indie shows use that belt as like their world championship like oh, yeah. the, like the figures inc version of it or whatever um that's a great belt All right, what's your favorite wrestling belt Man, I mean, I'm partial to the winged eagle just because I remember it growing up. You know, I remember when uh, Hogan had it and lost it, and Savage had it, and it's just it's that iconic one. But the smoking skull and you know the round belt that that Austin had's another one. The big eagle's great. Yeah, if I had to say WWF, I'm a big eagle guy for sure. Pretty partial to the big eagle. I like the smoking skull too, but my favorite's probably the last incarnation of the iwgp heavyweight championship the one that kenny had most of the oh, time yeah. the v4 that's my favorite belt that thing's classic belt perfect it looks just like a like a trophy it looks like a big heavyweight champion it's it's you know it's got mixes of all the best belts but yeah it, it kind of reminds awesome. you of a big gold but not quite like a modern era version yeah. of big gold because it's got the cool like little lines at the top, you know, and it, it's it's that's an awesome belt. That's probably my. Favorite. It had a nice. It seemed like it had a really nice leather strap to it when you would see Kenny have it and wear it and stuff like that. It just sort of seemed like it was just a really nice, nice done. Yeah, because it looked good on Okada too. So. It did. It did. And he's he's obviously I think he's going to win win Wrestle Kingdom. You know, they'll put the belt back on him. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Jay White leaves. I don't know what his deal is. But. It's weird. I remember when he showed up in AEW and he just didn't get the fanfare. You would. It's almost like they didn't know who he was and how great yeah. he was. Yeah, I have a bunch of friends who don't – they only watch WWE. So, like, when AEW started, I would be like, I knew all these dudes because I'm a huge mark. <laughs> so – but, like, my best friend – who uh, his favorite wrestlers Brock Lesnar and everything like that. I kept telling him about Kenny Omega, right? He'd be like, "I'm not, I'm not watching Japan and all this stuff." So oh. it was like when AEW started, he was like, 
he got to see Kenny and he's like, Kenny is his second favorite wrestler now behind Brock Lesnar. And I'm like, yeah, cause he's awesome. I'm like, just do yourself a favor and go watch some new Japan stuff with him. Cause it's even better than anything he's done in AEW. Oh, yeah. I, like, I tell people, I said, he hasn't done a match that he's capable of yet in AEW that he's done in new Japan. Yeah, exactly. Like I mean, it's, whether it was the vertigo, I'm assuming that's what it was. It was the vertigo and stuff like that. But I don't know if maybe he has a problem with working with some, because like, I don't think he and Cody ever had a good match. Like I look back at either no. ROH match and their New Japan matches. I don't know if maybe he clashes with some guys. Like he had a good match with Hangman, and uh, his stuff with Mox was like okay, but like yeah, he has a certain style that he works in. And like he like Okada, I used to tell my friend that because like when AEW first started, I wasn't a big AEW fan, right? I was still wrestling and stuff like that, so I just always would tell my buddy, uh, like. Hey man, you know, like call me when Okada's there. Like I don't really care to watch AEW. You know, tell me when like you know some of these better guys join. But uh, Kenny's definitely done better stuff in New Japan. But I think we haven't even. I don't even think he scratched the surface on what he can do. And uh, oh no, no I, I'm sure he'll tear down uh, when him and Ostray go. I'm sure that's going to be probably the best match of the night. Yeah, hopefully we get to see Kenny take this thing home. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe you never know. Yeah. I'd like to see him win the trios again. It sucks that they had him for the one night. I, I wouldn't have taken it off of him. I would have left, let it on him. I mean, obviously I think, you know, where they're going, you know, what is it? Three, one now. Oh, yeah. they're, they're bring, it's definitely going to go seven. And then it's just a matter of what they do. I would think you put the belts back on them. Because I, I don't, I don't, I don't think you're gonna do the Bucks for the tag titles right now. I don't think you put Kenny in the world title mix right now. It's just a way, leave it good. Yeah, give them the trios and then let them feud with House of Black or let them feud with something like know, that. Even Dark Order for a minute, maybe have Hangman do some kind of reunite with them and do something like they. I think they. That's who they beat to win the titles, right? The Dark Order. Yes. Yep. Oh, I, 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 I don't see. I, I don't. I couldn't see MJF and Kenny going. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that would be MGS just not his style. Yeah. I was just talking to my friend about that today. Actually. I was like, I can't see MJF beating any of the big monstrous guys either. Really? Like I couldn't see MJF having a great match with Miro or having a great match with like, uh, uh, what's it? Lance Archer. Like, I feel like those would kind of be off too. He'd have to do some like real predictable, like heelish thing. I, I just, I can't believe with Tony Khan, you're paying Miro and you're leaving him at home. A talent like that. It's like, it's insane. Yeah, there's there's too many guys in that roster who I think are like they want to protect, and it's like you get to a point you see it in indie wrestling, right? You get a lot of guys in the locker room who are like, "Hey man, I can't lose. I'm the champ some other place, man. I can't lose tonight." And then it's like you get to the end of your show, and there's been like nine draws or DQs or something. And it's like so you got to lose. Dude. I was always big on that. I'm like, no, I'm if I'm in a match and I'm losing, like I'm losing, right? Like you're beating, <laughs> me. like it's gonna mean something. And like I'm putting you over, like, because I, I ain't here to lose by some crap. You know, I had to do my fair share of it because I don't book the show. But it's like, I, I give Cardona credit, man. He he left WWE and just really brought so much eyes to indie wrestling this past, you know, two years, three year run that he's had. Yeah, he's he's that's a great. It's, he basically is doing what Cody did because it was like, you know, mm -hmm. who watched ROH before Cody left and joined ROH, mm -hmm. and then like he made AEW. You know, like it's. I have a feeling he's going to go those. back. I, I, you know, I just had this feeling they want him. We'll see. I don't know. You think Cardona Cody. goes back or Cody goes back? I think Car Cardona goes back. Oh, yeah. He'll be in the rubble for sure, I'd say. I would think. It's just a matter of will they let him do his podcast and his business on the side without taking a piece? That's the truth. They wouldn't let that Mandy Rose do that. So No, that's, uh, that's I think, his because he makes so much money. I, I, you know, that would be his, his sticking point, I think. Yeah, and if you can make more money and you don't have to wrestle half the time, you know, that's awesome. That's I think I just said on Twitter that Lana is making more money doing her premium content mm -hmm. than she ever did in WWE. So it's like, you yeah. know, and, and Miro just body you know, on the line every night or, or, you know, take some pictures. It's like, what am I going to do? Sometimes a no brainer. Yeah, for sure. It, I don't know. I, the, the world of professional wrestling right now is, is, is great. I feel like it's, it's got not as much as it did in the late nineties, but it's getting there on buzz. Like, it's people, there. like, especially like AEW, I have my like people at work who are like, I was watching the basketball game and then wrestling came on after it. And it's like, Jericho was on there. I didn't know Jericho wrestled, you know, and it's like, 
yeah, Jericho has been wrestling since 2000. You know, he never stopped. <laughs> they have some good stuff. I, I, I like, I have a lot of people that like AEW and then a lot of people now that Triple H has control are starting to look at the WWE product again. Yeah. It, it, as long as if both shows are good, that's better for professional wrestling, right? It's better for belts. It's better for figures. I think uh, you got to get the titles off Roman somehow, make it believable, and at least split them and give him one or do something. Yeah, I can't believe that he's had both belts for a year. That's ridiculous. And, you know, obviously he's not going to lose it till WrestleMania. And then whether you wrestle him both nights, I I don't know. I just, I I can't, I know they want to do it. And I think Triple H will probably, I just can't quite wrap my head around Cody beating him. I don't know. I just, He's been gone all year too. It's not like Cody's had like a whole year yeah. to like legitimately build himself up as some great, def, you know, challenger. No, but obviously they're going to bring him back to the back. Rumble. Maybe he wins, or maybe the maybe somehow they they throw enough money and they get the Rock clears his schedule yeah. as the Rock comes out and does it. But I don't know. They, yeah, you got to get the belt off. You got to get one of the belts off of him. Yeah, I think that almost like the networks have to be pushing that at some point, like. You know, hey, I mean, Raw, Raw's got to beg, man, we need a championship. Belt. Well, McMahon signed the contract to Rome. I mean, can't I, I don't blame Roman. I mean, he, he he asked for it, and he got a contract like it, Brock. That dude doesn't, dude's got two titles and doesn't wrestle half the shows. It's like, mm-hmm. how are you going to do that? That's, at least AEW defends the title on 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 Dynamite. You know, I feel like Dynamites alone feel bigger than most Raws, right? Yep. And and but that's also because there's four AEW pay per views, and there's a premium live event for every month for wwe or whatever it seems like we'll see what he does i mean tony khan we'll see what he does with roh if he separates him gets a tv deal we'll see yeah i mean impact's still alive so there's hope for everybody i guess I, I i hope we didn't see the end of punk i hope punk comes back some way yeah i don't yeah god that would suck i'm glad i got to see him i got to see him in st louis um heading up to full gear last year so whenever he wrestled eddie kingston i got to see him live That's and cool. he did a he did an in-ring promo That's that was like i met my uh my now wife like we met the month punk like quit basically or like a month before right i can't remember when he quit but so she'd never seen cm punk wrestle ever and i remember it was that like last august my buddy and i were sitting here on that friday night you know with the major announcement and it was like I was like, this is the dude I talk about all the time. I was like, this is the guy. I was like, this is like my favorite wrestler. I was like, he's here. It's ridiculous. I can't believe it. And then it's like, now he's gone already. <laughs> you know, it's like, God. We'll see what they do. Yeah, I, I would like to hope that they work it out. You know, if you ever cared about money, I'm sure you could work that thing out. But Oh, my God. you could. They could build that into a storyline. If you could get Kenny and the Bucks, they're willing to work with him and get him to work with them. Oh my God, the story they could, that could be like a year, year and a half kind of program. Yeah, I made a custom CM Punk TNT title. I don't have it. I don't think I have any more of them. I sold them to like one guy, but it was because like they were doing all these custom TNT championship. Miro had his, right? And I was like, it'd be cool if Punk came in and won the TNT title. And I did one with like the Chicago Star. That was like one of the first belts I really cool. made too. I'm surprised yeah. they did so many customs of that belt with Miro and then uh, who, who the other Scorpio guy. Had the Scorpio Sky's got a gold one. I made that. I uh, accidentally bought, like, I thought I was getting, like, six inches tall, and I got, like, six feet tall of gold leather. So I have a uh, – we're hoping Scorpio Sky goes back into business <laughs> TNT champion. Or maybe just people want a big run on gold dust IC titles because that's the same gold strap for those. But I would like to find that Barbary and something that big because I'm sure people – the one oh that new MJF too is a really great figure. I think it's the unrivaled or is unmatched what? five or something or four. He has, he has a couple good ones. Yeah, I got well, the he, chase. He them, if you could put it, you could put them all together. I forget who said that. Someone said the the key is it's like three of them, and you can take parts of the three to make the perfect MJF figure. That makes um, Fig Freak on Instagram was just telling me. Because I, I sent him something. I was like, hey, man, if I make this Burberry title, you want to take some pictures of it? He's like, I was just, you know, kitbashing my perfect C- um, NJF together. And I was just like, well, there we go. Perfect. Yep. Like, that's uh, that's exactly what three, three or four of the fig- – I think he's got five of them now, but I think you only need, like, three or four of them, and then you you build it. 
and it's like the perfect one. That makes sense because there's he was series two and then he was like series seven, and then he was also in Unmatched, two different. Un- so yeah, so he's got four or five. Yep. Oh yeah, I got the, I have a few of them. I have the Chase one too from series two. That's a good one. And they came out with a, like a special one where they really just only changed the T-shirt and put a sticker on it. But yeah, yeah, okay. they they did that a lot for a while. My favorite chase that I found for AEW though is definitely the Mox and like the New Japan gear. Mm-hmm. That's the best chase that I found. I wanted to get the Brody chase. I could never find it though. Brody Lee is like one of my favorite wrestlers. I oh, could not awesome. find that Brody Lee chase, but I ended up having a customizer make me a custom version of it because I was like, I'm sick of looking for this thing. <laughs> Yeah, going way too soon. Yeah, that I don't know. I think that that's what like galvanizes me to be an AEW fan is just like I was way his him beating Cody on that Saturday Night Dynamite was like one of the first moments where I like felt like I was a kid again, and yeah. I was just like, holy crap! I looked at my buddy. I remember it was like match had been going on for two minutes. I looked at my buddy. And I go, is he gonna Brock Lesnar this guy? I was like, is he gonna Brock Lesnar John Cena SummerSlam Cody? And then he gets him in the <laughs> ring. And he hits him with his finish and pins him. And I was just like, what just happened? You know, it was like, because Brody Lee hadn't really done a ton. He no. made have ended the, the empty arena all or, or double or nothing. But it's like, holy crap, dude. This dude just, Cody Rhodes is the top guy in the company. Like, he just jobbed him out in three minutes. And then, of course, Cody comes back and beats him in like a week. But, yeah, Brody Lee was awesome. And then all of his stuff he did on Dark Order. And I love that it came with the papers, the figure. So he could do the papers gimmick from from uh, being the elite and all that stuff. Yep. Like, yeah, he's gone too soon. Yeah, it's a shame. Shame. He was good. And you know, the Dark Order. I, hopefully, they do something more with the Dark Order. But I can't. Yeah, I know. I can't believe they keep peeling guys out. I can't believe they took Ten out of Dark Order and Anna J. Anna J. Sucked. I love Anna J. I can't believe that she's not even doing anything worth a damn with Jericho anyway. It seemed like something just to keep her with uh, Ty Conti. Yeah, it's the one thing with Tony Khan. It's just some of the decisions he makes. And, I mean, my God, you could have Miro. Miro could be someone to go after MJF. And you just – or do something with him. You just let him at home. Yeah. I just don't get it. I don't – it's got to be something with, like – you you don't want to just bring him back and have him lose or something. Yeah. You know, you want to keep guys big. But at the same time, they have so many belts, and you can't have everybody have all the belts. That's – why well, it's a good thing that they have ROH to put some of the guys down in ROH, but like yeah, Brian Cage, you're gonna have to have Jade lose. You know, I'll be interested to see what they do with that. Yeah, I was. I've asked on Discord a couple times what people think about that. Said some people think she'll end up doing the Goldberg, where she ends up holding the T- TBS all the way and then holding the the Women's World too. I could see the baddies turning on her. They're teasing it. I can see that. You know, you make Brit do it. You know, Brit's the one that beats her. They love Brit. Yeah, yeah. Or would make if it. Sasha comes, I, I, I don't. We'll see. Yeah, or even, I don't know. There could be another. You could bring. You could give enough money and bring back someone like an older diva or something. You could have one of them come back. But I'm kind of surprised they haven't gone off after some of the like, t- like Gail Kim hasn't had any. I don't know if yeah. Gail Kim can even wrestle anymore. But like Gail Kim or uh, who's another impact women woman from back in the day or TNA. I can't think there's a couple of them. I was thinking of that. Like, haven't shown up. Valkyrie is another one. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know why they don't go for someone like her. I mean, she could be something special. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of great women talent out there, but I don't know. I haven't thought too much into that. I, I really figured that Jade would probably just like never lose. But I thought Wardlow would never lose. Yeah. I don't know why they did that one. I mean, they signed it. He wasn't the one that got pinned, but still, he, he just. Yeah, it seems like that'd probably be the way to get Jade, the belt off Jade. Yeah. A three way. It'd probably be how they end up getting the belt off Roman, too. It's like, that's such a lazy way to get the belt off someone. Just have someone beat him because then make the make the big, you know, long title reign mean something by crowning someone else. They tried to do it with Brock Lesnar, what, like three times? And ten oh, yeah. so, until it got real, just, you know, when the tractor and everything came, that was just, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, for real. But I don't know. Wrestling is is so great, and that's why we get to do what we do and talk about all this cool stuff well, and make. And then I mean, it, plastic it, pieces. They'll and, tear the ta- they'll tear the town down if they could get the Rock to come back. But if they do, it's I mean, it's one match. Yeah, well, I got Cena for one match. I guess what oh, next week or the next week. Yeah. Or Peacemaker himself. We get Black Adam versus Peacemaker or something. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. 
But well, we're to that eleven o'clock time, so I'm gonna let you take us out. Anything you want to say as far as like, uh, I, I know some you uh, you have uh, you're gonna open some um, some spots up coming soon, or anything you want to say? Hopefully, Before hopefully you. I'm gonna open some spots soon. I'm trying to make my way through. I uh, I'll make this quick, right? So I'll take your time as we talk about the business, right? It's like, it started off as just kind of DMS and then now it's way too much to manage through just DM. So it was like, I did an email, right? I made like a turquoise fig belt email. You could send that to the email. And this kind of goes to how we were talking about a website, you know, within one day I had 62 emails and I was just like, what are we going to, you know, so I start making my way through emails and then I like deleted the email off all my social medias. Cause I was like, I don't want anybody to know about this email anymore. Cause it's way too full. And then I was like, all right, we'll just maybe just kind of see what people hit me up and, it, you know, maybe and then like make my way through the email. So I can say that as of last week, I've officially reached out to every single person on the email. I've talked to everybody in the discord. I have like an official filing system of uh, of how to, to keep things. So I think I've got like 39 orders right now and I really want to get those all done before I open. And uh, I filmed a video that I'm going to put on my Instagram sometime this week. I think it's lame because I make it, it seems like some super fake, like, uh, <laughs> hello, uh, you guys are great. Thanks for the support. I feel like it looks like super cheesy. It doesn't come off like me at all, but it's like, it talks about how I think the plan going forward is going to be to open like 10 slots at a time with a max of five belts. So like going forward and then like discord always gets, jump jump the line like discord will never have to worry about that until the discord has like ten thousand people in it or something if that ever happens but like i always make my room for my discord guys because i consider those guys to be og supporters who've been there since day one but like instagram i'll open up instagram to like 10 people at a time or something like i, I was talking to someone about this i'll start with 10 if i can crush 10 in, in a short amount of time then we might open it to 20 if 10's taking a long time we'll do five I'd like to get to a point where I'm doing like 21 day turnaround, you know, and I, I keep some of the belts like uh, this, right. I'm trying to keep belts just unpainted, but still gold. Cause that this takes to get to this point, it takes like five days wow. But to finish this into a real belt. It takes like two hours. So if I can get a bunch of belts made like this, we can get quick turnarounds. So hopefully going forward, I'll, I'll have like a, it'll still kind of be free for all where I'll be like, Hey, I got five slots, you know, first five people to message me, but, uh, that's kind of the plan, but you can check me out on Instagram. It's uh, turnquist underscore fig underscore belts. It recently changed. I think if you just look up turnquist, I show up yep, uh, sure. Twitter. I got Twitter. It's uh, at the red Daniels because that was my indie wrestling name. Red Daniels. I haven't gone and paid the, you know, whatever it costs now to change your Twitter, but those are the two places to get at me. Uh, thanks for letting me come on and talk about oh, belts, man. dude. Thanks, we ended up talking about everything, but oh yeah, I got, yeah. Thanks for coming. I have a huge like giant wall size Funko Pop collection too. We didn't even touch about that. <laughs> I saw your Funko Pops. I collect all kinds of horror. My wife collects more Funkos than I do. Her desk is funny because it's like this behind me for her work desk would just be all Marvel Funko Pops. Ooh. So yeah, we, I love we, uh, Pops. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've made some belts for Funkos too. So. Oh, hey, yeah. you got some people that were talking to, oh, it's, I guess there's a soda, a stone cold soda. They need a belt for that. For sure. I can, cause I can scale them pretty. I've even made a uh, micro brawler belts. So like the micro brawlers, you know, oh, yeah. I've made belts that go on these too. So they're pretty scalable. Obviously they don't get as much detail paint wise, but uh, yeah, we'll do a part two Funko special. Someone said <laughs> I, uh, I mostly collect horror and some anime Funko pops, but yeah, it's uh I collect everything. I got a 200 elites and like every AW figure made so far. So, Oh, wow. Yeah. I love it. I, I get, I normally AW uh, with WWE um, ultimates. I'm complete with, which really sucked for that to get the ring, to get those other two or three, but yeah, I missed out on the first. I don't have the, I don't collect warriors. Uh, yeah. I know that that's like a, Seems like every indie or every uh, wrestling collector like marks out after Macho Man's and Warriors. I don't collect those, but I've got like the Triple H and uh, like mm -hmm. Edge and Stone Cold and Kane and Undertaker, and I got a pretty hefty collection of uh, Ultimates. I really like the Ultimate line. Oh yeah, it's a good line. I wish they did more with the belt, but you know, or 
do some more guys and you know we don't need another macho we don't need a, the third ultimate warrior you know yep. more more guys yeah we're already getting another brock too it's like hey, wait, wait, which one is that brock with two belts and i'm just like i don't understand this he didn't have two belts unless the plan at one time was to put both belts on him that could be it yeah yeah someone was talking about that because at least they're going that far, though. The elite, the figures that are coming in those ultimates have their custom side plates. Yes. So at least they're doing that. I mean, like you can give them that because the the few that I've made, I've uh, I made some with just the WWE logo of this belt, and I made some Romans, and of course I made um, some Jinder Mahal ones for me because <laughs> I love Jinder Mahal. So he has his own custom WWE Championship belt. It's just not on him with the Jinder. He's a great one. Yeah, that was. Probably my favorite thing that's happened in WWE in the last 10 years when he randomly won the title. I was in St. Louis when he beat Randy Orton at uh, Money in the Bank. Yep. So that was sick. I like Jinder Mahal. He gets too much hate. I don't think he's on TV anymore. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's another guy. What are you going to do? Yeah. But thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, guys, thanks for coming to join me. Have a very Merry Christmas. Go check out Avatar. I'll see you guys live next Sunday. And uh, if you guys love figures and belts, go check out Dan. Yeah.